So the next surah Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim Qul huwa qul a'udhu bi rabbil falaq min sharrin min sharri ma khalaq wa min sharri ghasiqin idha waqab wa min sharri naffathati fil 'uqad wa min sharri hasidin idha hasad So Allah Azza wa Jalla says Qul ay again ya Muhammad muta'awwidan Qul a'udhu Say I seek refuge and al'udhu is alja'u wa aludhu wa a'tasimu bika It means I rely seek refuge and protection like when we say a'udhu billahi min ash-shaytan al-rajim I seek protection rely on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that's isti'adha and there's a difference between isti'adha and isti'ana that you heard in iyaka na'budu wa iyaka nasta'een that we previously done the tafsir on with the fatiha what's the difference between isti'adha and isti'ana isti'adha means to seek refuge isti'ana means to seek help what's the difference because both of them are technically seeking help right who knows who can give a guess? Hold on. When you seek help, you could be asking for protection as well. Yeah. Sorry, sorry, repeat that again. In, in a way, but no, it's not what I'm looking for. You're just talking about Tawbah, uh, specific in general. Um, okay, so it's the other, the only they mention is that you're running from something. You're heading for cover. You're running from something. Okay? But it is a form of seeking help. But which one? You're seeking, exactly as the word says, refuge. Seeking refuge. And rescue, right? And help. And it's Diana is general help. It doesn't really have to be because of a calamity that you seek. You think you seek help with Allah, everything, everything. Even you are not. You're struggling to open a can of, uh, you know, I don't know, tango or something. <laughs> you seek help in Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Say Bismillah. That's the Billah. Do you, do you get it? But the other one is that you're seeking refuge, you're running from something. So it's most likely calamity. And that's why everything to follow whenever you hear a'udhu is always something that's detrimental. A'udhu billahi min ash shaytan al rajim. What are we doing here? Seeking refuge from the shaytan, run away from him. In, prot in, prot in protection. A'udhu bi rabbil falaq in this ayah that we have. Bi rabbil falaq. Why bi rabbil falaq? And al-falaq, al-ispahu, the ulama have mentioned that al-falaq is al-subh, like Allah Azza wa Jalla says, فَالِقُ الْإِسْبَاحِ وَجَعَلَ اللَّيْلَ سَكَنَا فَالِقُ الْإِسْبَاحَ He is the one who's, who opens and brings about the isbah the yani the subh and what does the subh mean the dawn right waja'ala layla sakana and he is made the layl and the night a resting place <clears throat> so the night disappears not for the yeah al falaq is a, a subh the falak, the falak is the subh, not bringing about. It's when the subh comes. 
is when the dawn is the crack of the dawn. Al-Falaq is the crack of dawn. So when it comes and it brings its light, and then the, 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 the night disappears due to that Falaq that is coming, that this is what the, Allah, the person is seeking refuge from. Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Qul ara'aytum, in regards to Allah bringing the day and night, Allah says, Qul ara'aytum in ja'ala Allahu alaykum al-layla sarmadan ila yawm al-qiyamati man ilahum ghayru Allahi ya'tikum bibiya. Wallah, what an ayah. What an ayah. This ayah always, subhanAllah, you have to think. Allah said, Look how Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala made the layl sarmadan. Had he made the night continuous, always have night. Who can bring to you a day? Huh? Who's going to bring for you? Biya, Allah says, and light. Because that's the whole problem. Allah Azza wa Jal could have said, who's going to bring for you a day? But he wanted to mention a specific characteristic from the day that makes it preferable. What's the best thing that the day brings? Light. So Allah Azza wa says, look, had he made the night long for you continuously, who would bring you light? Do you get it? Wordings that Allah uses, you have to pay attention. May yatikum bi diya. Who bring for you biya? Okay, biya means light, right? As Allah Azza wa says, ja'ala shamsa, huwa alladhi ja'ala, Allah Azza wa says, he made uh, shamsa biya and wal qamara nura. He made the sun biya radiant. The ulama they mention why is the sun referred to as biya wal qamara nura in this verse and the, and the moon as a light. They said because the biya it has the connotations of harara heat. It's a, a light that comes with some sort of heat. That's referring to the sun. That's more appropriate to be used for the sun. And nur is light. It doesn't necessarily have to have heat. And that's more appropriate for the moon. That's why Allah says, he, He's Allah the one who made for you the sun. So anyway, who's going to come with biya? Who's going to come with a light? Meaning the sun and the, and the heat that it comes with. Afala tasma'oon. Don't you hear? Then Allah says, قُلْ أَرَأَيْتُ مِنْ جَعَلَ اللَّهُ عَلَيْكُمُ النَّهَارَ سَرْمَدًا إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And look if Allah opposite had made the day, constant day, constant light. إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ وَيَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ And the previous verse was يوم, إِلَى يَوْمِ الْقِيَامَةِ as well. مَنْ إِلَاهٌ What إِلَاهَ What Lord? غَيْرُ اللَّهِ غَيْرُ Allah Except the Allah, the true one where they worship. يَأْتِيكُمْ بِلَيْلٍ Who's going to come with you at night? Huh? And now what's specific about this lane? Tas Allah Is it my phone or something? Or is it this? I feel like. طيب, who's gonna Allah Azza wa Jal says Bilaylin Taskununa fi? Who's gonna bring a night? Taskununa fi that you will rest in. Don't you see? Allah says, Surah Qasas. So you seek refuge in the Lord of Al Falaq. Rabb Al Falaq. And this Rabb that's connected to Al Falaq, this we mentioned in previous tafsir, is Idafatu Tashrif. Idafatu at Tashrif. You, meant, you see this a lot. Naqatullahi. Okay? Baytullahi Rabbu uh, Rabba Hadha Al-Bayt Okay Or in this case Rabbi Al-Falaq Rabbi Al-Nas All of these are connected They're idafa Connections of Tashrif Of high nobility Because of the fact that they're connected to Allah It's something you learn in the Arabic language Whenever something is connected Something is connected to it for a reason and so Allah won't just connect anything to himself. He won't say Rabbu and then something. Rabbul Ka'ba, Rabb, except that these things are noble and high and lofty. Like here, Al-Falaq, the crack of dawn. Right? We all need that, right? As Allah mentioned in that part of the verse. Right? So when the night, when the night goes, Allah brings that beautiful crack of dawn, which is, subhanAllah, the Falaq. Right? And the Subh, that has its own nafath. Nafakh, he has his own breath, you know, that Allah Azza mentions about. Okay. 
What's the ayah? What's subhi idha? What's subhi idha? والصبح إذا إيجا ااا ده إيجا والصبح إذا تنفس and the morning أي the صبح the crack of dawn إذا تنفس when it breathes that's why that's the best air that's the best air you can breathe that early morning ah who who experiences that فجر goes go فجر and you you realize right so refreshing right that fresh air especially in UK there ain't many there ain't many cars out can you know, polluting, people are still sleeping. So the air is so clear. Anyway, so Allah swears by that, by the way. We mentioned the things that Allah swears by, right? In this ice is one lady that as us was subhi idha tanafas. And by the day, dawn when it breathes. What the Surah to Taqweer, verse 17. Surah Taqweer, verse 17. Anyway, so then, so that's who you're, you're seeking refuge by, the Lord of Al-Khalaq. From what? Min sharri ma khalaq. From everything that he's, from every evil that he's created. Question, can we associate evil to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So here he says, min sharri ma khalaq, the evil that Allah has created. Allah has created evil. Would you agree Allah has created evil? Would you agree Allah created evil? What do you think? If you if you get it wrong in, in front of the teacher or during the lesson, there's no problem. So just guess. Uh, no. Huh? You say yes. What about you? No. What about you, Mahdi? You're going to say, Yadullahi ma'al jama'ah. <laughs> nah, uh, you said uh, no, you said no. Okay, the answer is nisbi, which is this or that, meaning Allah has created evil, but nothing 100% evil. Very important point. Fadal. Allah created evil, but it's not pure evil mahb. It's not, it's not evil that is just pure evil. In, in, in no good in it where am i getting with this because that means every single evil that allah created there's some benefit where there's even a lesson to learn like look at today how much advancement we have in technology in science in the understanding of the human the human brain the autonomy of the human the animals the earth the minerals and the uh, you know the resources that was dug out from the land all of that was understood via evil and destruction and death that had come for us to understand that so can we attribute 100% evil to allah hashallah never we can never and attribute so when we say min sharri ma khala from the evil that he's created and it is wisdoms behind it sometimes we may not know now but we may, we'll know later did you understand what I said? Okay. So I was saying that we can't attribute complete 100% evil to Allah. Meaning, like for example, one second before you write, like, like for example, all these technological advancements, scientific advancement, it came through some sort of loss of life. You know, for example, somebody had to get shot for us to understand guns and how evil they can be or how beneficial they can be. In terms of when it's needed, some people need to be neutralized. Like in terms of, obviously, we don't do the neutralizing. Like in terms of police, or you know, somebody's about to go and kill and shoot a, a newborn baby. You have to, and you only can neutralize him. You learn the bullet can kill, so somebody had to die the first. There had to be the first bloodshed of the bullet. So someone can say, "Oh, these bullets are pure evil." No, there's wisdom in it. There's a time when you be like, "Alhamdulillah, someone got shot." And the time you like, Allah, Allah, someone got shot. You understand? So the point is, it can never be pure. 
all of the evil that Allah created, every single evil, drugs, everything, you name it, there's always a benefit and a barakah and a blessing from one angle, you know, and it's evil from the angle that, yes, there's some evil with it, but it's never pure evil, and that's the wisdom of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, and wisdom is wad'u shay ala mawdu'ihi. Wisdom is to put everything in its proper place. So you can start, you can write that now, inshallah. Naam. So it's not evil in the first place. It's sorry? So it's not evil in its first place. No, this is this is disturbing me. Hold on. Naam. I think that was better now. Naam. Yeah. So it's not evil in its first place. It's 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 not Yeah, it can it can it can be it can be look. It can be good that some evil, that good that contains some element of evil, or it can be evil that contains elements of good. Do you get it? It can be, it's evil, but it can be preceded by good or succeeded by good. The point is never pure evil. Never pure evil. You know? The fact that we advanced in what we have understanding of the world and how it works, there had to be, there had to be death, there had to be death, loss of property, loss of life, life and stuff like that, right? So someone can't say as the atheist, and this is a rebuttal for the atheist, as they say, oh, if Allah Azza wa existed, then why does evil exist around the world? That's what they say, that's their argument, their logic. Wallahi, all of their arguments are lying, wallahi, the destruction. There's a little clip from uh, Sheikh Saleh, uh, Sheikh Saleh Sindi, Hafizahullah uh, Ta'ala, who's in one of the mashaykh in uh, Medina, and he tackles atheists a lot. He's from the ulama of Aqeedah. He's from Sheikh Amman al Jami's student, students of Sheikh Amman al Jami, Qawi. Anyway, he destroyed them as a clip. Inshallah ta'ala, maybe one day we will translate it. He mentions five, six points and just destroys atheist arguments. Although they don't really need attention. The atheist is weak. They're weak. They don't, don't give them too much attention. You are giving strength to their arguments. You, I mean, just, you're just making them worthy of being argued with. <laughs> well, like, you have to be a fool to be an atheist. I mean, if you really, really, atheists, I just believe they're, they're stubborn. And they're just tricking themselves. If they just don't agree. But they come up with this wahin things so futile and that. So the so the best answer we say is what we explained. We say not every so they say, Oh, why are children dying? Why does why does for example they say, look at this person who's a handicap, who's a disabled. And you see some of them, you see them on machines, wallahi, you know, they look like, you know, you have to say alhamdulillah, you know, they look like someone would from the outset, someone would be like, What's the point of them living? They're completely hooked up to a machine and, and why did Allah create that? They'll bring this shubuhat in a person's heart as if Allah Azza wa Jal is evil for that. Wallahi, we say in that is a barakah. First, there's many I can think of even. Uh, but it's not, the, it's not a lesson to be getting into shubuhat and takal and stuff like that. You always don't as well seek knowledge the back way in from the back door. It's where the Hyde Park is coming to knowledge from the back door. Shubuhat in. It's not shubuhat in, it's knowledge in, any shubuhat comes in, gets kicked out. That's how it works. You know, it's not shubuhat in, it's knowledge in, shubuhat out. That's how it works. The people who seek knowledge full shubuhat, wallahi, a lot of them get lost and they get stuck. And once, once you can't explain something because of your feeble mind, because you don't understand yet, it hurts to not know and you start doubting. And imagine praying salah and having that doubt in you. And you open that door to yourself. Seek knowledge, tadarruj. Foundations, lay the foundations. And when you have these firms, especially the ulama, where they said, shortcut. A lot of these things, actually, some of us were exposed to it. A lot of these things, you'll be like, ah, oh, and you try to answer this and answer that. Then when you go to a basic usul al thalatha class, you're like, subhanAllah, if I just stuck to those usul al thalatha or these basic classes and I built up like that, these would have been destroyed time ago, these should have. So, anyway, just the, so the answer is because the question has been asked. So, a person we say like that, number one, so the person you see, for example, who's disabled or who's yani, completely, yani, we're talking about like really hooked up like to, to some of them, they look like paralyzed, completely paralyzed, right? Um, we say, first of all, it's a test for you. That's one of the benefits. Allah Azza wa Jalla, he mentions, Alif Lamim, Hasib Al-Nas, Yaqulu Amanna. You think if you say Amanna, Laif Tanun? Second, you know what I mean? Because some people, they would say, 
kill, kill this child of ours. There's no point of him living. Let me save his pain. And then they'll end up in halak themselves. Okay? Number two, you would appreciate. If you didn't see people who are disabled, people who are on wheelchairs, people who are poor, people who are downtrodden, people who are lost property, people who their houses have burned, people who have been through war, refugees, if all of that didn't exist, you wouldn't appreciate it. Imagine everybody, wallahi, I wouldn't want to live in a world where everybody's okay. Imagine everybody is good and everybody's living good. Wallahi, we would lose our minds. We'll go crazy. Because we have these challenges and things that come, alhamdulillah, he weighs the option, he, he teaches us lessons, you appreciate. That's why the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, لا تنظروا إلى من فوقكم don't look at those who are above you ولكن انظروا إلى من أسفل منكم rather look at those who are below you or have, you know, less, maybe less uh, affluent or less, you know, in terms of health or whatever than you. For verily, I, that is safer for you and لا تجدروا, تجدروا نعمة الله عليكم that you don't squander the favors of Allah upon you. So that's, so that's another one. There's signs and there's a lesson, okay? There's a lesson and there's many other benefits as well that from them studies and have been done. Studies have been done on people who have certain disabilities, certain disadvantages in their bodies or their organs, dysfunction in organs, for example. Studies have been done to prevent and to create medicine and cures. So Allahu Akbar, you got out of it, a barakah as well. So uh, doubt yourself before you doubt Allah. Sit down, calm down, learn the deen. You know, you said la ilaha illallah, learn the deen. And with that, you will develop. But if there ever comes to you that waswasa and you really can't handle it, go to the alim, go to the scholar, and they will cure you with the wahi, the revelation of Allah. So anyway, min sharri ma khalaq, from the evil that Allah has created. Min sharri jami' makhluqat, from all of the evil that is created. So the evil of, you know, those, um, those uh, insects, those poisonous uh, animals, those predators, uh, evil of the evil of jinn okay all of them because why allah said min sharri ma khalaq and ma is min sigh al umum ma is from the tools and the prepositions that are used for generality for umum allah said man can allah said uh, uh Like for example, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, "Nam." Nam. I was going to come with an ayat that has a sira. Now, here for example, Allah Azza wa Jalla says, Alam ta'alam anna Allah lahu mulku samawati wal ard wa ma lakum and that is not for you min duni Allahi other than Allah min waliy wa la nasir meaning not for you none. So ma is min sirr al umum. So Allah says min sharri ma khalaq from anything and everything of evil that you have created. Okay? So that evil that that you seek and refuge from Right, is that evil that would not bring you about? You know, is predominantly evil. Okay, that no benefit is in it for you, and you won't benefit or even an an. Right, you seek refuge from that. As for something that has minimal cons, minimal disadvantage but the majority of it is advantage and think then we don't say that we mean the one with the sharr outweighs so you seek refuge from that then Allah said وَمِن شَرِّ غَاسِقٍ إِذَا وَقَبْ and from the غَاسِق إِذَا وَقَبْ and here this is اللَّيْلْ إِذَا أَظْلَمَ الغاسق is then is the night when it descends with its darkness وَمِن شَرِّ and from the evil of the غَاسِقٍ of the night when it descends with its darkness. Sheikh Fawzan, he mentioned, فَإِنَّهُ حِينَ إِذِنْ تَظْهَرُ الْهَوَامُ وَالْوُحُوشُ 
at that time the hawam come those poisonous insects those poisonous uh, creatures and the wuhush the predators because with this ghasiq, meaning the darkness that 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 the night comes with because it's interesting in the beginning he said falak right I seek refuge in the Lord of the Falak. And then you seek refuge from the Ghasiq, from the darkness that he comes with. So a person should seek refuge in Allah from the darkness. Uh, and the evil things that are around. And the shayateen, the devils that are around at night. And the evil that goes on at night. The evil that goes on at night. Let me tell you some one of the biggest things that I mean I found very very puzzling, and no, not puzzling, but it shows Subhanallah that you know the ghasiq ida waqab, the shar of the ghasiq, the shar of the darkness that the light comes with, is so accurate, especially when it relates to shayateen and the activities that go about. You know what I'm alluding to, right? Why have you never seen clubs and parties at 5, 5 p.m.? I mean, not at 5 p.m., 1 p.m., Luhur time. <laughs> Lunch time. Someone could say, oh, because people are, okay, holiday. Let's just say bank holiday. No, still, even on a holiday, of a bank holiday, imagine now we have a long bank holiday, right? They still won't party at Luhur time. That's how you know the shayateen are really active at night. And furthermore, they won't even party when the night just came in. They will party when it's proper ghasiq. When it's really, really ghasiq, what does ghasiq mean? The darkness. When it's really dark, it has to be proper dark. That's when the shayateen come out. And that's why the sunnah of the Prophet is as the sun sets and the darkness descends, it's from the sunnah to bring the children in and to close. There's a particular hadith for this. And to close the windows. You understand? No one wants to shit. The shayateen don't want to party at 12 noon. You seek refuge from the ghasiq okay? when, it, when it descends, yani the evil. Okay? <clears throat> now. The next verse is um, And here's another evil that we seek refuge from. Those magicians that يعني, cast magic on people. So you seek refuge in Sharri. Who you seek refuge from? It still continues, right? From Rabbil Falak. Right? All of it goes back to Rabbil Falak. That's who you are. Yeah, and you're seeking refuge from. Nafathat actually means the blowers. From the word Nafath is to blow. Fil Uqad. In the Uqad means the knots. What's meant here? Is uh, the magic that they place on ropes and things like that and they blow onto the knots. Because the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi is authentic that he was, magic was placed on him from a Yahudi. I don't know the reason revelation, but uh, you can find that easily. If you do a quick search, you'll find out the reason revelation. But last Quran, uh, ala kulli hal. One of the reasons for revelation actually was sent as a ruqya. I'm not too sure if it was specific for this magic that happened to the Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And a sihr. It's kufr, my brothers. Anybody who does sihr, 
as disbelief. Why? Because within sihr, you have to do acts of disbelief. Because when they do a nafa thati fil uqad, these uh, sawahir, yani, when they do their magic, they get it musta'in and lishayateen. Okay. And he mentions, Sharaf Fawzan, he mentions, was sawahir qad yakunu sahiru min ar rajul. It can be from a man. Why, why, does, why, why does he mention that? Especially what was it called? Witch hunting, isn't it? Witch hunting, for example. No. وَمِنْ شَرِّ Next verse Allah says وَمِنْ شَرِّ حَاسِدٍ إِذَا حَسَدَ And from the evil of every envious when they envy. So what is hasad? Hasad is تَمَنَّ الزَّوَالَ النِّعْمَةِ عَنِ الْمَحْسُودِ It is hoped because there's a difference between hasad and ghibta. Ghibta. There's a difference between hasad and ghibta. Hasad is that you hope that the blessings, you want the blessings that someone has, and you also hope that they lose it. A'udhu billah. Na'udhu billah min dhalik. What an evil soul. Person, deliberately, they want the blessing, that's number one. So they crave it, what other people have. Oh, I wish I had that. Oh, look what they got. I wish I had that. And not only that, they go a step further and they wish that that person's blessings was removed from them. Hatred to its core, sah? Well, hasadu sharrun, it is evil. It's haram, it's from the major sins. يَأْكُلُ الْحَسَنَاتِ And he eats the hasanat. He eats the good deeds. As the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said from Hadith of Anas, and the Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, قَالَ الحسد يأكل الحسنات كما تأكل النار الحطبة أو قال العشبة. He said hatred, this type of envy, eats. And in this description, meaning you would want the thing and also it removed from the person. He said it eats the good deeds just like fire eats wood. Or in another narration, eats. يعني عشب means those um. يعني الله مستعان. How do you translate عشب? يعني يعني eats wood على كل حال لا 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 what's the word it's like bush bush and stuff like that like bushes basically or greenery أما الذي يتمنى أن الله يعطيه مثل ما عنده but as for the person who يعني they want something or that person has a nice car nice house or whatever from the dunya but they don't want it to be removed from that person. The Naz Ghibta. That's, that's, that's different. That's to hope. But that one should be avoided. You shouldn't look at people's blessings constantly because that can lead to hasad. Okay? Because, and that one, the, the Mashaykh, they mentioned to be of another category, but we mentioned that. But before that, we mentioned the hasad that's permissible. The envy or sort of jealousy. This one, we want to give it a good, better translation. We don't want to say envy. The best translation is hasad, even though it's the same word. But here, we say jealousy. Although jealousy can have bad context as well. Although it can have bad context. But here, it's the jealousy that's permissible is the jealousy for the deen. So, and Abdullah ibn Mas'udin, radiallahu anhu, قال, قال Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, لا حسد إلا فثنتين. There's no jealousy that's allowed except in two things. رجل آتاه الله مالا. Or in another narration, Another narration, he mentions, This hadith says that there's no hasad except in three. A man who's been given wealth, abundance, and he, فَصَلَّتَهُ عَلَى هَلَكَتِهِ it takes him to almost any difficult and strains because of because of him giving it in the haqq 
of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. This person meaning this person strives. hikmatan and the person Allah gave hikmah, meaning knowledge. Knowledge of the Quran. In the other narration we mentioned Quran, right? In the other narration he said, Ana al he gives sadaqah day and night. This one he says, knowledge, and he reads the Quran day and night. This one says, knowledge for who yaqdi biha wa he actualizes and utilizes this knowledge and he teaches it. So look at that. The Prophet ﷺ, he said, he's telling you almost, the dunya thing is not even something to be hated about. I mean, something to be jealous about. Be jealous about someone who's got more knowledge than you. But again, not the zawal, uh, not that you wish for the person to be. And here is from the angle of tanafus, from the angle of challenging and racing to do good. As Allah Azza wa mentions many times, المتنافسون, and for that, let those who race race, let those who challenge each other challenge each other. The ulama they mention racing and having tanafus upon haq is permissible, provided that the person, when he's racing, he is not making his goal of racing by constantly looking at the one who's racing. So you say, for example, to your brother, Ya akhi, let's memorize 40 hadith. Inshallah, let's, let's see who can memorize it more. Maybe you don't even stipulate that condition. You just say to yourself, he says, let's memorize it. You say to yourself, I want to memorize before him. And then you just say that to him. Then you do it, but you don't keep looking at him. But if you say that, then you, oh, he's on hadith eight, Allah star. And then you, no, because that can lead, that can lead you to wanting him to fail. So you race, but don't look. You just go. And that's what a real race is. When you race, you don't look back, right? That's what a real race is. So that's permissible. That's what the ayah means. For that, meaning that Allah mentions, uh, have, uh, Allah mentions much of Jannah. And then he says, for that, let those race, race. And another verse, Allah says, وَسَارِعُوا إِلَىٰ مَغَفِرَةٌ مِنْ رَبِّكُمْ And hasten to the mercy of Allah, your Lord and His forgiveness. So the one who's been hasid or hating, لَا يَضُرُّ إِلَىٰ نَفْسَهِ He doesn't harm except himself. And he's also committing a crime and disobeying Allah. How? Who knows how he's disobeying Allah? Subhanallah. Uh, but it's not really something that's... He's, 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 he's having hasid Envy on something that another person has. It's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who is al Hakim, al Wadiya. He's the one who places everything in his proper place. And that's the definition of Hukk Hikmah. They put everything in their proper places. He's the one who gave this person nothing. That's why there's a statement from one of the Salaf. They mention, I've never hated or had envy, envy on someone for something of the dunya. He says, because it is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Where's that phone? Oh. Whose phone is that? Anyway, it, it is Allah who gave them that. And if Allah Azawajal intends to put them in hellfire due to that, and if that thing is going to be the cause of their destruction, then why would I hate on someone or why would I be envy about someone who that thing is going to cause them to be in destruction? And if that thing is going to be a cause for them to be in paradise, then why are you going to hate or have envy on someone who that Allah Azza wa has destined to Jannah? Allah, but look at the way yani, the Salaf al-Salih think. Their minds are mapped different. Now here's the other category the ulama mentioned. فِي الْحَاسِدِ الْآئِنِ الَّذِي يُصِيبُ النَّاسِ بِنَظْرِهِ الْآئِن from the word Ain, The one who a constant gazer on what the people have. Constant gazer on what the people have. From the hadith Aisha Taradila Anha Kalat Kala Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam Istaidu Billahi Fain al Aina Hakun Seek refuge. Remember Istaidu Istiada Audu A al Jau Wa Atasimu. Remember those words? Fain said Fain al Aina Hak for indeed the Ain is the truth. Allah Musta'an. For so for a lot of social media users, sah. Wallahi, they put themselves in halak. And even worse, if you're not going to have mercy on yourself, irham. Yani have mercy on your awladak. Have mercy on your own children. That's the most cherished thing. Why? Because they, 
the small, the young, the babies, and you put them fi halak. You put them in destruction by taking pictures with them, by recording them. Even if it's just to show good, some of them will record, ah, ya abi, qul, ah, and then we'll make her say the dua of entering and exit the home. Who cares, ya akhi? Hide, hide your ni'mah and your blessings. Allah Azza wa Jalla has given, entrusted you with that. The ayn is the haqq. So they are called these individuals who look around and gaze. Some of them can't have children. Some of them have situations they're in that, or, or, or you know, they haven't got money or they're poor, they haven't got food. And you're flaunting these things, whether you like it or not, whether you're not flaunting it or not, that's, you know, actions speak volumes. Actions have their own type of speech. And they are saying different things to what you may perceive to be otherwise. To a person, they're reading it different. You was the cause of that. And these people exist. Some of them don't fear Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. They constantly gaze at what others have. Imagine their plate is full, they have food, and they go, Akhi, what have you ordered? What's that you got? When hubbu dunya. So they call the a'in. The yusibu nas, they, you know, they strike people with their eye. And the evil eye is real. And in fact, there's a hadith of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he mentioned some of the biggest deaths, one of the most deaths are going to be from this ummah, is going to be from the eye. So, the Mashaikh, the Sheikh Fawzan and others, they mentioned it is no min al hasid. It is a type of hasid. And he said, Sheikh Fawzan, in his opinion, he said, Bal hiya sharrul hasid. It is the worst type of envy. And the Prophet Sallallahu has negated, has forbid this, forbade this. And Abi Huraira said, and in Nabi Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said, Iyakum wa dhan, fa inna dhan akthabu al hadith. وَلَا تَحَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَجَسَّسُوا وَلَا تَحَاسَدُوا وَلَا تَبَادَرُوا وَلَا تَبَاغَضُوا وَكُونُوا عِبَادَ اللَّهِ إِخْوَانًا He said, beware of suspicion, dhan, iyakum al And here dhan, there's two types of suspicion. There's the suspicion which is permissible and a suspicion which is impermissible. The suspicion which is impermissible is the one the person has no apparent evident evidential reason to be suspicious about someone or they may think they have but really when you examine why they're being suspicious about something it's actually not it's just is maradun dakhili maradun nafs is and it's something within themselves they're suspicious about people because some people they're negative and they do negative and they think negative so when somebody's doing something they're thinking oh he's against me or he's being negative no that's the way you think sorry do you understand? Maradun Dakhri, they have like a sick heart or sickness within themselves. That's the one that's impermissible. That's what it says. For in the van akdabul hadith is the worst of tells. Okay? And the one that's permissible is the one, for example, the ulama they have against Ahlul Bid'ah. So, for example, Al Dhahabi and others they mention that if you see a kalam mujmal, if you see an ambiguous statement from an Ahl al-Bid'ah person, then you have to push it to what his aqidah is. Whereas the opposite to Ahl al-Sunnah, and this is a rebuttal for some of our Salafi brothers who accuse Ahl al-Sunnah when there's something ambiguous, and people would say ambiguous things sometimes, although you should avoid it, because that's the way of Ahl al-Bid'ah. Ahl al-Bid'ah are the ones who speak ambiguous and play with ambigu ambiguities. So when Ahl al-Sunnah though, someone who's known for uprightness, Zalim, Talib, Talib al-Ilm, you see him say something, kalima, a word that comes from his mouth, you push it to a good meaning. And this is from Mahmal al Hassan, that Umar ibn al Khattab. That's the manhaj of Umar ibn al Khattab. And al Uqala is narrated that he said, Ida min akhika kalimatun, la tadun kalimatun kharajat an akhika. Don't think a word that has come out to your brother is to be something that's bad while you can find a good interpretation for it. And there's a report that's been attributed to the Prophet, but it's not authentic, that find for your brother 70 mistakes. You heard that one, right? Sorry, 70 excuses. You heard that one, that's not authentic. But the hikmah is understood. Anyway, so the van, the, the, uh, what you see from Ahl al-Bid'ah, they do, they say ambiguous things that the Ahl al-Bid'ah, you take it to the asal of what they're upon, what they're upon is batil anyway. It's most likely tensha'u min 
اصل باطل anyway ولا تحسسوا لست شاهد anyway ولا تحسسوا ولا تجسسوا and don't have حسد ولا تجسسوا don't spy on another uh, sorry don't spy on one another don't ولا تحسسوا don't spy on one another ولا تجس uh, ولا تحسسوا don't spy on one another ولا تجسسوا don't inflate prices on one another ولا تحسدوا and don't hate one another ولا تدابروا ولا تباغضوا on and on don't do all of these things and don't uh, hate on one another وكونوا عباد الله إخوانا So this is a surah azima that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is teaching you tawheed and reliance of Allah. He started with قُلْ أعوذ برب قُلْ أعوذ برب الفلق من شر ما خلق شر غاسق إذا وقف ومن شر نفاثات في الوقف ومن شر حاسد إذا حسد Allah is teaching you تربيه on worship and Allah seeing you in reliance on tawheed, tawheed, tawheed. Tawheed, Tawheed, Tawheed. Afu's gonna tell me. Yeah, what time is that? Subhanallah, it's, it's almost time. So that's with with that we've completed Suratul Falak. Mara uh, Yukum, should we quickly do Suratul Nas? Is that is the last surah? Okay, real quick, huh? Inshallah, last but barakah in time. قل أعوذ برب الله سبحانه بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم قل أعوذ برب الناس ملك الناس إله الناس من شر الوسواس الخناس الذي يوسوس في صدور الناس من الجنة والناس الله سبحانه قل أي جن يا محمد أعوذ أي من بوسى أعوذ إز Alubu wa atasimu wa aljau and seek refuge. Birabbi nas from the Lord of Anas, Ay al Malik al Khalik al Mudabbir, the creator of Anas. Huwaladi, because Allah Azza wa Jal is the one who Rabbi Nas, he's the Lord of the Nas, and he Mudabbiruhum. He controls them and governs their affairs. Jami al Nas, Yani min Adam ila until now, all of them. And this is, يعني, and then he says, Malik in Nas, and Malik is a sifatun min sifatil Rabb, subhanahu wa ta'ala. Malik, قُلْ أَعْضُ بِرْبِ النَّاسِ Malik in Nas is min asma'i Allah, subhanahu wa ta'ala. فَلَا مَالِكَ لَهُمْ سِوَاهُ There's no king or governor or king, in this case, other than him. Uh, Malik in Nas, for who al Malik, subhanahu wa ta'ala, Yani no one is co-equal to him and to your muqiyama. But as for the dunya, there may exist other people who are yani muluk, mulukan. And this is uh, but it is a da'if compared to Allah. It's a da'if king. These are da'if kings. Right now, the coronation, sah, this king right now who's having his coronation. Uh, that's he's a king in his dunya. People see him as a king. But Allah is al-malik, alif lam al but Allah is the one who gave them this as a minhatun min Allah. He gave them this kingship. Allah gave it to them. As Allah says, Qulillahumma maliki al-mulki. Tu'ti al-mulka man tasha'u. Wa tanzi'u al-mulka min man tasha'u. Wa tu'izzu man tasha'u. Wa tu'zillu man tasha'u. Biyadika al-khayr. Innaka ala kulli shayin qadir. Allah is maliki al-mulki. He is the owner of the mulk. The kingdoms. Tu'ti al-mulka. He gives the kingship. Man tasha to whomever he wants, wa tanzi'u, and he takes away from al-mulka, the kingship, and min man tasha, from whoever he wants, he takes it away from. Wa tu'izzu, and he raises, man tasha, whoever you want, you raise whoever you want. Yani qul, yani you are meant to say this, Allahumma malika, you are, yani you raise whoever you want, you give the kingship to whoever you want. Wa tu'zillu man tasha, and you belittle or debase whoever you want, bi yadika al-khayr, in your hand is all the good, inna ka ala kulli shayin qadir, to Allah, you are, Able of all things. As for the Akhirah, there's no other king. Allah says, Yawmahum barizun, the day that it will all come out. La yakhfa ala Allahi minhum shay. Nothing would be hidden from Allah about them. Liman il mulkul yawm, to who is the kingdom today? Who is the king now today? Lilla al yawm here, this is alif lam. This is referring to the al yawmi meanings. The king, uh, the day, I need the day of judgment. 
Lillahi al who's the king? Who's the king today? Lillahi al-wahid al-qahar. Who's king? Who's the kingship? Who does kingship belong to? Allah al-wahid al-qahar. Then Allah says, Ilahi nas And ilah we mentioned is al-ma'bud. Al yeah, right? We mentioned that already. Al yani, uh, uh, there's two aqsam on this. Ma'budun bihaq, wa huwa Allah. Al-qismu al-thani huwa al-ma'bud bil batil There's two types of ilahs. The one that's worship in truth and the one that's worship in falsehood. Allah says, فَمَا أَغْنَتْ أَنْهُمْ آلِهَتُهُمُ الَّتِي The aliha or the use of worship doesn't benefit them. So there's false ilahs. أَجَعَلَ الْآلِهَةَ إِلَهًا وَاحِدًا Have you made all the gods one god? That's what they said. إِنَّ هَذَا لَشَيْءُ الْعُجَابِ This is a strange thing you come with, Ya Muhammad. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Then, بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ So that's Tawheed al-Rububiyya. بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ The Lord of Al-Nas. Thanian, Tawheed al-Uluhiyya is in a statement of our إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ So, رَبِّ النَّاسِ Tawheed, يعني al-Rububiyya. إِلَاهِ النَّاسِ The إِلَاهِ is the one that's worship. المعبوه. المعبود. المعلوه. Okay. هِيَ الَّذِي يَسْتَحِقُ الْعِبَادَةِ and then Tawheed al-Asma wa Sifat is in the part Maliki nas He's the king of the Nas, or one of the names of Allah. Why? Why are we saying all of this? Why is this being said? Quran Rabbi Nas, Maliki Nas, Ilahi Nas, the Lord of Anas, the King of Anas, the Ilah of Anas. Why? Min Sharril Waswasil Khannas. And الوس الوسواس بفتح الواو والتفتح on the واو no وسواس or was or يعني بفتح on the واو it is the شيطان as for the يعني the second واو that has a كسرة was 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 يعني بكسرة on the واو فإنه مصدر a waswasa yani the whispers. Wasawis. Naam. Wasawis. Naam. And al khannas huwa ladhi yakhnusu. Meaning the one who stays behind. And that's the shaytan, the description of the shaytan. Yani if Allah has mentioned khanasa, he stays behind. And I'm not involved in that sort of thing. Obviously, it's because Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has been mentioned. And he doesn't want that. Anas ibn Malik narrates from the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he said, إِنَّ الشَّيْطَانَ وَاضِعٌ خَطْمَهُ عَلَى قَلْبِ إِبْنِ آدَمِ فَإِنْ ذَكَرَ اللَّهَ خَنَسَ So he's been given access to the hearts of Bani Adam when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has mentioned خَنَسَ And here's the words being used. He flees, يعني disappears and goes away. وَإِنْ نَسِيَهُ إِلْتَقَمَ قَلْبَهُ فَذَلِكَ ال Waswasu al khannasu. So when you constantly remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, then they go away. But if you don't, then he gives the whispers. Now, there's much that can, that can be said. Uh, and then Allah mentions a description about them. Fi nas, that they whisper in the sudur and the chests of man. A يَلْتَفِتُ إِلَى الْوَسَاوِسِ يعني the people uh, it would harm only the people who they pay attention to these whispers and yani everybody is subjected to this but the ones who pay attention are the ones who would be affected by this and just to close off and mention the ulama what they mention is one of the best cures to waswasa to whispers that people suffer from you are yourself the best cure the best Remedy yourself. اقطع الطريق يعني cut the root from where it begins straight away. Don't entertain it. The thoughts. Don't pay attention to them. Because Allah Subhanahu wa Taala, the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he mentioned that Allah has forgiven ما حدثت به أنفسه the the souls are in Sanaa Wahdullah and that which they whisper to themselves ما لم يتكلم أو يعمل به as long as the person doesn't talk about it or not act upon it, refrain from it. Slowly, it would start leaving me. 
But if you keep talking about it or thinking about it or remembering it to Avdim, you would make it bigger and bigger and then it would become your second nature to keep thinking that way or what way or sick type of thoughts. And then it's harder to get rid of because almost the remedy is kind of almost the same dose. It has to meet on par with the doses, the poison. There's a lot of poison, you need more medicine. A little bit of poison, a little medicine would do. So if you keep entertaining whispers, if you keep doing haram actions to come back to Allah, it may take, but obviously Allah is done. But it's easy for the one who Allah makes it. Of course, Allah can open the generally speaking. The further you go, sometimes it can be hard because you're talking about getting rid of something you're used to. So you keep what listening to these whispers. People struggle to get this out of their mind. And that's one of the biggest issues people ask ulama. Oh, I suffer from what's what's that? Our teacher Abu Suhaib is one of the things that he mentioned. Every time, and what I've heard, every time he's asked about this question, he says, You yourself are the best to deal with it. You don't need to go to a raqi. You cut the root and constantly fight it, and then it will go away. And it is from the shaitan. Why? Because he's been given access to the heart, as Allah says, and the ones who the ones who whispers in the chest of a nurse and you seek refuge in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala so again Allah is teaching us tawheed you seek refuge in him nas. ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to benefit us by that which we have heard that which we have heard and with that we have finished the tafsir of qisar al-suwar of the book of Sheikh Abdul Aziz ibn Baz and inshallah ta'ala there are some exams on this but what we'll do we've taken many surah, suwar so what we'll do inshallah maybe about We'll count, I'll count how many surahs there is and I'll half it and we'll take an exam on each so do your revision very very nice exam on it uh, to strengthen your memory Barakallahu feekum once again Ustad can forgive me and the students that have arrived Jazakumullah khair Subhanakallah Muhammad Ashadu an la ilaha 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 Astaghfir wa atubu alayhi Wa qur rabbi zidni